Hi everybody, my name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. <laughs> you know, it's really, it's really an honor, again, to be here. You know, to be given the opportunity as I am, you know, so many times a year, so many times over the years, to, to welcome you to Bridging Heaven and Earth. To welcome you into an experience where the intention of every one of our shows, if you've seen it before or just watching the opening, you can get an, a sense of what we're here to do. You can get a sense of the vibration of our, our intention, our desire, our wanting to be with you in a certain way, our wanting to be with each other. Because in this studio, obviously, you know you're looking at you know, one human being, me. <laughs> And there are a lot of people on cameras, there are a lot of people in the audience, there are a lot of people, you know, doing all kinds of jobs and makeup and hair and, you know, clappers and floor directors. And all of these people come together with one desire, with one intention, in, in a sense, at the root of their intentions. And we might like to do this, we might like to come together, we might like to have, you know, there's always food and drink and incredible people come together. But we've been doing this since, since, <laughs> since time began, it seems, sometimes. And the intention has always been the same. The intention is for us to share with you and share with the extraordinary guests and the art and the, the videos and the music and the, the poems and the dancing, a vibration, a vibration of connection, a vibration of, of togetherness, a vibration of collaboration, a vibration of love a vibration of oneness, a vibration of truth, a vibration of harmony in a seemingly disharmonious world. And again, we come together. You know, you and I and all the people here and all the people who watch and all the people who get bridging on all over the world and all the people who help with the internet site and all the people, all the people who are intending at this moment in their lives to, to, share, to feel love and share it. And that, that web of love, that web of truth is getting stronger and more vibrant and more real and more conscious of all the pieces of the web. And that's, in a way, the new paradigm, the new paradigm of us coming together in joy, in collaboration, in a recognition of our oneness, of our connectedness, and what has been the differences or the feelings of lack or the feelings of not enough are, are disappearing into the feelings of the inclusion of that everyone on this planet is our brother and sister, even though there seemingly are wars because people feel that there aren't brothers and sisters in the next country, in the next town, in the next religion in the next sexual preference. But the web of truth, the web of love is getting stronger. And we know it. As that other thing is, is reaching the end of its paradigm and the reaching of, of the end of its illusion, this new paradigm of truth is, is coming stronger. And each of us has to remember in our daily lives that that's what we're here to do. We're here to be the light of the world. We're here to shine light where there is illusion, light where there is darkness. And we don't have time for anything else. I mean, what's the point? You know, we talk about, you know, when we do the show, I mean, if we're not doing it joyously and lovingly, what's the point? I mean, all of us have stuff that somewhere along the line maybe we have to do in this earthly body, you know, in, in countries and pay taxes and register your car and smog it and, you know, all the stuff we have to do when we live in a society at this time in the third dimension. But we really know that that, that experience of love, that that dedication to the, to the experience, the intention, the realization of that truth is what else is there. And again, with that preamble, with that dedication of this show, we have a guest whose life is dedicated to that. I mean, it has been for a long time. 
Diana Lang is an extraordinary spiritual teacher. She's had 25 years of experience being a teacher, a teacher's teacher of meditation, of yoga. She's written an extraordinary new book, Opening to Meditation, and her life, again, is dedicated to the realization of that love, to feel love and share it. She had her own radio talk show that went out all over the world. It was a spiritual talk show, again, about that, it, you know, I mean, at some point she realized what, what is there for me to do other than that? What else makes me feel so joyous? And we have, you know, videos that are so powerful, inspirational world music videos of this group, Mantram, that has extraordinary, talented world musicians who play the most celestial, empowering music. So we have two videos of theirs. And as most of you know who've you know, been watching the show over the last six months or a year, we're in the middle of this you know, unbelievable Bridging Heaven and Earth International Art Project where <clears throat> in this vision, in this dream, in this realization that you know, we were, it was important for us to put out the energy of let's, let's create a acupuncture for the planet. Let's have all these people who, who recognize the new paradigm is coming create a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. And we've been getting you know, unbelievable jewelry and art and paintings and sculptures from all over the world. And tonight we're going to show two more of them. We've been showing them and we've had art project shows and actually one of the upcoming shows we're having, so keep watching, is going to have you know, 10, 15, 20, as many as we can get on in an hour extraordinary paintings from all over the world. So, I mean, we really have a show, again, dedicated to the oneness. And if you're watching the show after me talking for this long about it, you know, that's, that's why you're here and that's why we're doing it. So join me in a short meditation and Diana's going to be with us and, uh, you know, it's an opportunity again. So please join me in a short meditation. Thank you. So we're going to start tonight's show with, uh, <laughs> other than me talking for, uh, but we're going to start with the, uh, or we're going to go right now to the uh, video by uh, this extraordinary uh, musical group, Mantram. It's the Maha Mantram, and we're going to show it in two parts. Just settle in, relax, and let their music carry you. So, Mantram. Before we play the Maha Mantra, which is the great mantra that was given thousands of years ago. Traditionally in India, um, people when they leave their bodies, they try to go up to Kashi, outside of Banaras. Hopefully that Lord Shiva will say the Maha Mantra in their ear as they leave their body so that they can attain liberation. The Maha Mantra consists of 16 names of the Lord. And um, two years ago in Poland, it was given to me in a meditation to record this as the last song for the Mantram album that we have, that we did over there. And so this great Maha Mantra we do in three sections. Um, and we end with the Sai Gayatri Mantra and also with the Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavatu, which is basically wishing that there's happiness in all the heaven worlds and all the worlds here on earth because people are seeking happiness and peace within their lives. and. And we believe that through the names of the Lord, it can bring happiness and peace. I'd like to introduce our players. From Boulder, Colorado, we have Jeff Litke on tabla. And from the Philippines, we have Sham Reyes. And on the keyboards, we have an extraordinary young man named Surya Badafasina. And also, um, I'd like to introduce our organist and beautiful lead vocalist here, Radha Badafasina. Namaste.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back so much. It was quite a group, aren't they? So we're here with uh, Diana. And the picture in between us is uh, one of the pieces for the Bridging Art Project, Daniel Rock, Rockholt, Autumn Sun. It's a, a photograph, extraordinary photograph. Just so many different types of manifested intention and beauty have come in from the, the art project. It's really, it's really a wonderful thing. So welcome. I'm glad you could come. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, it's great. So you've been like involved in consciousness and love and oneness for a really long time, Earth time now. Yeah. And you just came out with this new book mm -hmm. about meditation, but you've been teaching meditation and yoga for a long time. When right. you talk about meditation, what do you want people to to experience when they're doing it? What what you know, what's the intention there? I think simply love, you know, which is what you keep talking about, to be able to be comfortable in our own skin, to love ourselves, to love, to love, to feel love, to be loved, to live love. If I could put it in a word, it's love. Yeah, I know. It's interesting because in a way it's very simple. Yeah. I, I mean, and the human way of doing it is so complicated. Yes. Even meditation gets, you know, everything gets yes. complicated. Yes, and that was my goal in the book uh, was to say that meditation is simple and that we're already meditating anyway all the time and to just call it that, which to me just a spiritual life is simply a conscious life. That's all. Yeah, awake. With love. Right. <laughs> well, if you're awake, really, yeah. I mean, that's what you'd be experiencing. Yeah, and in awakeness, love is. You know? Right. And when, when in your, like, you know, path through this life to talk about it, did you realize, like, this is what I have to do, that I'm on fire this way, that, you know, the rest of my life, and whatever happens up and down, I'm yeah. going to be, like, unrelentingly. Yeah. And it is like a burning or a calling, you know. I, I'll say a funny thing. Um, probably when I was three was my first awareness that I, I, this sounds kind of heavy, but I remember at three years old not wanting to be here, having a conscious standing in the middle of the hallway, the little child just getting how hard this place can be, you know? And, um, and it was a beginning of a process that made me ask questions like, why are we here and why am I here and so what is life for? So it started for you and it was consistent from three pretty much? Wow. Yeah, and then it had hits like at seven and then at 14 again and then at 21. And I was teaching every when I was... Every seven years? It, around, you know. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Don't they say every, every cell in your body changes every seven years? Yeah, faster than that, that, but yeah, the yeah. whole body. Yeah, every single thing, that's true. Right. Every single thing. I thought it was seven, but yeah. No, that's right. And... Um, I think, you know, astrologically, I'm an astrologer as well. My dad is an astrologer, and his wow. mother was an astrologer. Wow. So I come from this long line. So having that and as a father... You? No. <laughs> <laughs> what's your sign? Yeah. <laughs> but having that as a beginning um, so made me So that was learn always around your house of, like, yes, great big distances and vastnesses. Yeah, and learning how to think abstractly. Right away, I knew the planets before I knew my numbers. You know, wow. so even though you can take or leave astrology, it, it sort of isn't so important to me as much as the thinking that came with it to see the patterns and it. yeah, right. and that we're soul, yeah. and that's thrilling. You know, and that there's these patterns in life and mm -hmm. in, that are written in stars. But I think that got me thinking because even when I was seven years old and eight years old, I was doing everybody's chart saying you're going to be a veterinarian. <laughs> There was right. only five things you could be a doctor or a veterinarian or, right. or you right. know something like that from a kid's perspective. Right. But people still call me now and say, "I did. I became a doctor." <laughs> wow. That's so, but that was a great thing because it made me open my mind in a way that most people don't. So young, you know, and it definitely put me on a path. So by the time I was 13, I was reading Alice Bailey which are pretty intense the That's intense like white theosophy. magic and theosophy. And yeah, stuff and all like the rays and all that stuff. And, and By I, 13. I was reading that work, wow. which is, if you've read it, it's dense. It's no, dense it's material, yeah. you know? Right. So I had that as a background and um, studied pretty much everything I could get my hands on, you know? And out of that, what I came out of my little book is so simple. And out of all this depth training that I've had and studied so many philosophies, what I saw was that here's the note that's the same throughout, whether it's the TM root, or Christianity right. or Judaism or anything, that there's a root, at, right, and that root is love to me. 
and I found that most people are uncomfortable in their body and uncomfortable with themselves and that the key to all of this is to learn to trust ourselves, that inner voice that we completely dismiss because we're taught very young to completely dismiss it, that it's not valid. Yeah, that's, that's something that's <clears throat> yeah. not good. Exactly. And in some places, the work of the devil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is yeah. and somewhat the, and heavy. The, it's exactly. It, it is, you know, that's really true. And part of it is just when you start to do a meditation practice of any kind, you immediately start to expand your consciousness right away. And, it's, and I really feel that from life to life even that you kind of recapitulate so that people with uh, very difficult backgrounds, you know, I really feel that part of that is a, re a quick kind of coming back in so that you can pick up where you left off. So that by the time you're 14 or 20, you're, you're already kind of working, mm -hmm. you know, because right. you've been, you're trained young, you know. Mm -hmm. And I work with a lot of people that are creative and artists and thinkers. And, um, and I see that in a lot in common that there's a lot of struggle in their past. And I feel like that's part of it because there's some sort of divine order about all of this, you know. It's like perfect. Mm -hmm. I really see that and feel that. And the other part that feels important to me is because of my yoga practice, having taught yoga to, for so many years, thousands and thousands and thousands of classes, that to me the, the word is embodiment. It's one thing to theoretically understand spirituality. It's another to be spirit. Be spirit. To get it inside so it's in your hands and it's well, in it your eyes. it can't be otherwise, but, you know, to like have yeah. it manifest, you know, just one with it. Yes. Well, yeah, but what happens is that people kind of say words and then it aren't in them, you know. And when, it, when that, those two circuits come together, you have it's pretty potency. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and so it, part of what you do is try to line that up. Both yes. in, you, you know, you've worked or played hard to make that line up in you and now to share that with others. Absolutely. That's everything. It is, I call it congruency, this kind of your inside and your outside matches, rather than feeling one way inside and acting another on the outside, which, you know, I do that too. But what I try to do more and more is to really be real <laughs> and to just be myself as much as I can let myself be myself. And when, what, when what do you think prevents <coughs> people from doing that and what are ways that people can, you know, overcome those seeming obstacles? What prevents people from being themselves is shame and pain and self-hatred <laughs> and family social stuff that makes us doubt our truth and our inner voice and make us feel that we are not worthy. And so it's all about healing that bridge, you know, to be able to be yourself that that's not only all right, but it's your gift back to the planet to be able to, to, that our existence is that gift of being our true self. That's how worthy we are. <laughs> you know, we're holy. Right, to experience that, yeah. you know, and over and over again. And then yeah. And when someone starts to have that awakening of their own sacredness, their life, of course, reflects it, just like their life reflects the lack of that or the disbelief in that. Well, it will reflect that, too. Do you think that there's a change now? I mean, we were talking earlier about like a new paradigm coming in and that the momentum is the holiness of the human being rather than, and, and the infinite quality and the inclusive quality of that experience rather than all the separations and all the yeah. divisions and things like that? Well, absolutely, it's everywhere. I remember even at 20 years old, just being in my classes and I would call them tulips bulbs uh, grow in the ground and they will suddenly burst through the snow like as if in one day and I remember feeling that people were coming up so fast like a normal process I think in another time was it was a very slow thing and only a few people did and I think now people are just popping up everywhere the consciousness is everywhere and truly the more that we even recognize that the more that that happens and again it comes back to love because if the vibration yeah. of love yeah. being stronger and stronger. And yeah. then the Berlin Wall falls. Exactly. And did it fall in one minute or, you know, just... Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I know it's and the, even right now where the world is so 
going through so many changes, I really feel like it's a crystallization process, that things have become so fixed. And as we're at a process of really true expansion, that in a way it has to get worse to get better, it almost needs to break, mm -hmm. you know, which is partly, I think, what's happening right now. It needs to break. Those old patterns are so old and hard and not supple anymore. And so we're, we're seeing that manifestation, but it's changing. And there's going to be a whole new world. It already is happening. And hopefully we won't do too much damage, yeah, <laughs> you well, know, in our breaking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very traumatic. Yeah. I mean, we were talking earlier about how, <clears throat> you know, there's just so much trauma on the planet now in people's lives. I mean, just in the crew of bridging, I mean, you know, just so many th things are happening yeah. in people's lives. Right and now. Little diseases and, you know, it just seemed like more crew was more involved in a certain drama. Yes. For this particular, you know, show than... Right. I mean, we've done a lot of shows, and it almost like we never had yeah. <laughs> you know, so much drama. I mean, compared to what's going on on the planet, no one is having those kind of experiences, you know, with bombings and, right. you know. Because it's in the air. It's in the air. And, and just, you know, know, one of the things I do is I write a weekly broadcast that's for through the Internet. Yeah, what do you call it? It's called it? The, the Weather, weather report. report. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's an, an etheric weather forecast. It's an etheric presentation that says, okay, sensitive people, here's what's happening, and here's how to work with that energy. Because if you, f if all of this, if you're having a disease or a problem or whatever's and you happening, think it's which, your, by yourself right, which the everybody way. does, right. and if you recognize that it's really just in the air right now, right. it kind of helps you move through it a little bit softer, you know, so you're not hitting so hard on these well, things. Well, you're not taking it so personally. Once exactly. you can detach a little, it's a little easier. Exactly. You know, you think you're out there all alone with this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, this doesn't feel good. Right. And, you know, I mean, it's not Misery Loves Company exactly, but no. there's something to it that, yeah. you know, that Well, it's a just, different perspective. Right. It's rather just than just saying, bigger, you know, something's wrong up. with me. Right. There's just changes happening, and we're all affected, every one of yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, I don't usually get affected by a lot of these things, but, yeah. I mean, I found that my frustration level was, over those last couple of weeks, was or last couple of months, not so much the last couple of weeks, but for a while there was really, I was yeah. like on edge. Yeah. A lot of, more, much more than I can remember. <laughs> what yeah. is this? I know. And then when, when you know, we were putting that, I re went to your website and I read your weather words. Well, she's on, you know, she yeah. knows what's happening, so this is good. Yeah. You know, so I'm glad she's going to be a guest on the show. So. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, so, I mean, you find that, that when you write that, it makes you experience what you're experiencing. Yes. And, and put it out there. And kind then of. I, I mean, when I, I kind of do a meditation, basically, and then tap into something that may or may not have to do with me. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Oftentimes it doesn't. And just like you said, I don't get affected so much because I've got so many processes and things right. that I know that I don't get bumped around as much. Mm -hmm. but, um, but so what I do is I go into the meditation, and I just sort of get this piece of information that is that thing in the air mm -hmm. that may be affecting me. Mm -hmm. or it does, is affecting me, but not right. maybe as right. much as, as much others. As, right, uh -huh. right. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, I think it's a really amazing time. You know, with so much seeming turmoil and so much seeming craziness, yeah. so much seeming disease and war and all this. And yet, you know, like in the foundation, you know, that's crumbling like down, and this yeah. other thing, this tulip yeah. or this other giant structure, this always like new earth, they call it. Right. Uh, and you know, based I on co cooperation, collaboration, love, rather than competition, division. Right. And aren't we lucky to be alive right now? I mean, we're called for sure, and I think why so many are coming up is because it is a transitional time, and we're sort of like spiritual midwives, you know, kind of helping this thing happen. Because it takes a lot of us, I think, to help that bridge because it wants to collapse. It wants to go back to what it, 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 it's it, it status quo. It almost doesn't quo. know how to go from one yeah. to the other. Because it's, it's a new. big change. It's yeah. new. Yeah. So, I mean, do you find that, that in your meditation teachings and, and yoga teachings that more and more people are finding that they need to, to come into that realization, that the hunger is growing, that... The old things aren't working. The old, you know, money, fame, family, fortune. Yeah. You know, you live in L.A., so there's, let's mm -hmm. say, a lot of that <laughs> going on. You know, as things go, I mean, yes. it's the, you know, Hollywood and Hollyweird and all that stuff. Yeah. 
Definitely. It's more and more and more and more. And there's never been so many New Age spiritual self-help books probably in history as there are now. You know, everybody's writing them, which is fantastic. I think people are so hungry, so starving for it. And religion in the standard way is feels narrowing, I think, to some people, even though it can be beautiful, too. You know, it's also sacred, but I think people are wanting something more direct experience. And, and meditation more is. more inclusive, in a yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Know, not that it's separate, right. that one versus the other, or one is right or better. Right. Somebody knows that, you know, we all get a sense somewhere right. that there is this oneness, this infinite, that we are brothers and sisters. Yeah. And the rest is so small and silly. And yeah. But it's, it's habitual, you know, it's hard to break habits like that. Yeah. So, I mean, when you wrote the book, your intention was to just get this out more, to get these mm -hmm. tools, to get these ways of people going from mm -hmm. fear to love. Mm -hmm. And partly just because of the way my life has gone is I've tended to be able to teach people that are either teachers themselves or people that have never meditated in their whole life and might be doing this about it thinking, you know, it's yeah, right. not right or something. Right. So I've dealt with a lot of people that have, have had, had no experience in it too, um, mostly actually. And that has given me a lot of perspective of how to teach something so that you can really use it. And I say it, it's like a hammer and a nail and it works if you use it. It's got this, this practicality to it that I wanted to make meditation this very spiritual, mysterious, mysterious thing. It isn't. It's just something yeah, like breathing. Your breath, right, yeah, right. So, and, and your and the book has a beautiful uh, CD, an audio CD yeah. with it. So, yeah, it's yeah. So it helps people kind of guide them through it, and so it's you can't fail with this thing. <laughs> right. And yeah, I mean, how can yeah? I mean, the whole idea of you know success and failure is one of the, the places where we. Right, you know, and not going to experience our own, you know, truth that way. Mm -hmm. All right, so maybe we'll talk, I and mean, you'll give some, you know, hints to people, sure. and maybe even do a short guided meditation. Okay. We'll see if, you know, you think you want to do that. But so let's go to the second video, Maha Mantram, the second part with the group Mantram, you know, international world, inspiring, incredible music. So Mantram. Sahishwara Vidmahe Satya Devaya Dimmahe Tanna Sarva Prashodaya Shri Sahishwara Vidmahe Satya Devaya Dimmahe Tanna Sarva Prashodaya
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So, yeah, thank you, Manjum, for that. That was fantastic. So the painting you're seeing in between uh, Diana and I now is uh, by Leah Bowden. She's an extraordinary friend. She was one of the first people who committed to doing a piece for the project, was really excited about it, came all the way from the East Coast to, to we did this, you know, beautiful art show opening celebration uh, not too long ago, and she came out for that. And it's called uh, Bridging Heaven to Earth, Leah Bowden. So, so Diana, uh, <laughs> uh, when you teach meditation, I mean, you, you try to make it accessible to everyone mm -hmm. and, and, in a way, simple. Yes. And why don't you describe that, and then maybe you can do a little short you know, yeah. guided meditation. For that people. would be great. Yeah. Well, because of all the different traditions teach different things, you know, from mantras to mudras to prayers to certain positions with your body, you know, cross-legged positions or kneeling or, or rocking or all these different things. And what I always tell my students is just to do what feels comfortable. Because what your own body wants to do, like some people's bodies really do do this when they meditate. It just naturally starts to happen. Or, or you find yourself just doing some shape in your body that is exactly right. And if you really follow that, it is exactly right. Your intuition right. knows yeah. for you. Right. Yeah, and it's almost, I think, better than copying something that, you, that someone else says. Even though that, there's nothing wrong with that. You can use rosary beads or whatever you want to do. And you, that might be your starting point. But ultimately, just like any creative artist, you want to sort of find your way. Mm -hmm. you know? And then that becomes more powerful, I believe, because mm -hmm. it, it's connected to ourself. And it's back to trusting yourself and finding our way different than somebody else's way, which works probably perfectly for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know? So everything that I would teach is to f do what's comfortable, go where your body wants to go, follow your breath, quiet the mind as best as the mind can be quieted, which is an impossible task. Mm -hmm. The mind's job is to manufacture Shatter. thoughts. Yes, and it just is busy, busy, and that's what it does. There's nothing wrong with that. Behind that mental veil is, a, is God's silence, you know? And that's where you're trying to get to in between the breaths, I say. You know, mm -hmm. it's the easiest way to think of it is like almost like as you're inhaling and you're kind of thinking about inhaling, you know. But those points in between become these vast mm -hmm. opening potentials in there. So I just tell people, get comfortable. You can sit on a chair. You don't have to sit in any particular way or do any particular thing. But just to become still and open yourself, be receptive to soul and God and love and in and, and whatever way you, we can you know and everybody's way of that is a little bit different and it's just kind of feeling a kind of calmness sort of sweep over you and allow that and then worrisome thoughts when you're just you know ang anxiety or repetitive thoughts or what about this or lists that we make in our heads when we get quiet you know you just sort of try to drop behind and behind that veil and that's what I think of it as just a veil there's this beautiful allness that oneness and so it's pretty simple all right so I mean do you think that you can give a short one and, and guide people who are maybe unfamiliar or would like yeah. to try a new one or, yeah, yeah would like to you know be with you for five minutes <laughs> that way yeah, why don't you do that okay I would yeah. love to okay yeah. so just find a comfortable way to be find your body <clears throat> find your breath and notice your breath by breathing deeply at first, just as a starting point to be able to make a connection with yourself through the breath. The breath is the bridge between the soul and the self. And so you're trying to make that connection in a conscious way by your breath. Our breath is our animation, it's our physical life force, and it's also not physically dense. And so it is more like spirit to inspire, to breathe. And so as you connect with your breath in that conscious way, you begin to make a different kind of connection in your body, brain, mind, heart, soul. So your eyes can be closed. You can just feel yourself resting in your heart. And you feel your awareness start to become more still and you feel that awareness 
of that allness, that goodness that you are part of, that you are completely connected to, that you have always been connected to, that you will always be connected to through all time and space. And in that silence, you rest. In that love, you rest. And in that space you are making, you are connecting with something that is as big as time, as old as forever. And you are part of that. You are part of this moment, this present moment with yourself, with this breath. You become still. And in this stillness, you begin to remember who you are. which is love. Love, love, love. Love. And you touch that point, even if it's just for a moment, this moment, one moment, and your whole self is impressed and changed forevermore. Use your breath now in a conscious way to seal this understanding in your body so that it becomes part of you, it is part of you, but in a conscious way part of you, that you are holy, you are sacred, you are good. And in your heart say that, I am holy, I am sacred, I am good. And with one breath more, feel yourself knowing this and so much more than this as you begin to let yourself transition out of this meditation. And when you're ready to open your eyes and doing whatever that feels natural to you now, that's good. Done. Yes. <laughs> okay. I, you know, she was taking a breath and some big mouth came in. I was just getting relaxed. <laughs> Why did he jump in there? <laughs> no, I thought so. I mean, it thought like it had been completed. But yeah, that's really beautiful. You know, it's uh, you know, it's a, it's an amazing thing how you know we're so loved, we're so beloved, we're so one, yeah. that all, it's amazing, really, on some level, how all the separation can look so real, how all the illusion yeah. can look so real. I mean, to me, some points, it's like, do people still believe that? <laughs> <laughs> really? And that's why, you know, like, a, a, uh, you know, when the astronauts go, like, two inches off, and they see this little globe, yeah. it's like, how do we do what we do when we're on it? Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. So, I mean, the more that, like you were talking about, like, you know, to bring people into that experience of, of you know, we've been saying on the show a lot, whatever you think you are, you're more. <laughs> so how do we get to the place where you're not thinking about what you are, but you are? Yeah. And then you're just moving, like we were talking about earlier, like love yeah. in motion. You yeah. Know, it's like, and, and how would love be? And it's hard to say, really. Yeah, and to be undefended, you know. It's like all the shells around us that keep us separate from each other, even good friends, even, you know, husband and wife and ch child and parent, you know. You'll see these kinds of walls of I'm the authority or I'm the boss or I'm the husband or I'm the wife. Yeah, the definition. I'm the, you know, yeah. and we sort of wear it like a costume. And it's a separation, like cigarettes are or anything. You know, it's just another way to kind of keep space. <laughs> and not to make that bad because it's, there's a reason for that, but right. well, I'm always trying to drop away more of that and to be kind of dissolve all those things that you know I'm any kind of ego pushes, you know, of or identity, I mean, identification. Exactly. I mean, it's not that we lose discernment or everyone can come right in our face all the yeah. time because right. that's like disharmonious. Right. But to be so in harmony. Right. That in harmony doesn't have a name. Love doesn't really have a name. Right. 
Yeah, and then there is that oneness where you really are just one together all the time. You're practically breathing the same breath, and that then is it's like this making love thing, you know, where you're just in love, walking in love, walking as love, and everything that you're moving through starts to be an extension of that. And I talk about it like a the wake that you leave behind you, like a boat does. That you know what's behind you is is the evidence of where you've been, you know, and what do you want to be there? So that makes it kind of easy to know how to move from decision to decision because you want to sort of have this path that you can, you feel good about, that feels true, that feels love to you. Mean you mean nobody else thinks yeah, so. Yeah, right. And, no, right, and nobody else may. That's right, nobody the thing. Else it might may. be a very just... But because it's an internal harmony and internal yeah. knowing. And it doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't, no, because you're in, <laughs> yeah, no, because your happiness is not coming right. from either, you know... Right what's behind you or what's in front of you. Because right. right there, you know, love is the question, love is the answer. Right, exactly. And, and that's the artistic life. And I'm an artist, and I think that, and I grew and up with artists. you don't have artists. a piece in the art project? <laughs> yeah, what I what is know. this happening? Uh-oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to me, artists, what artists do, or musicians, or, or speakers, or people that are creative, they're simply being themselves. And the great artists and the great inventors and the great anybody's are people that have somehow gotten access. At least for that time. Yeah, around that subject. subject. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Know? But how can we, like, just, you know, I mean, like, now's the time where that has to filter through everything. Yeah. You know, it can't be just when we're in the temple or in the, yeah. you know. Well, that's why meditation is so great, because you can do it every day if you want to. Right. And it, the more you do it, the more it works. And what I like, you know, what I c encourage people to do is to just do like a five minute practice even, just something like we just did. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful. Oh, absolutely. Very different than if you think, okay, I'm going to meditate for 30 minutes. They'll do that for two days. It's just too much and it's unnecessary. You can, you can get to that place like we just did in a few minutes. You can touch that spot and if you just touch it, it, it changes, changes the whole day. Right. Every decision you make I mean, has changed. I mean, the reason a lot of times people talk about, first of all, it takes a, sometimes it takes a while to slow the process down yeah. and to have that experience. Right. And that's why, like, old-time, you know, gurus and messi used to talk for, like, four days before right. they could calm people. But it's different now. It it Things are different. faster. Right. And you don't need four days. You need it's four right. minutes. Right. <clears throat> but but it, there also is some benefit to, like, laying in the experience. Yeah, you know oh, I mean? absolutely, staying there. You know, so doing like a, a meditation retreat, if you're having the experience, if you're thinking about, right. you know, it's like, is it better to be in the church thinking about the whorehouse or, right. you know, in the whorehouse thinking about God? You know, it's a tough question. <laughs> you know, it's, it's throughout That's history. Funny. But, you know, I mean, I think, you know, you just want to be having the experience. Yeah, and whatever way. Some people right. do want to have a l more lengthy experience, but mm -hmm. even just a moment, even just a moment, that's my point. Absolutely. If anything absolutely. makes a difference, it really, really does, and it's worth it to just absolutely. try. You know. I mean, I always used to say, if, if we could remember that we're hurtling through space on a ball. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, this yeah. whole thing is so vast, and everything we think is reasonable. Right. The whole thing is, you know, yeah. to our minds is completely unreasonable. Yeah. But, you know, when we cut a piece of infinity so small, it looks reasonable. Right. Beautiful. But there's no real, you know, yeah. it's infin you're going from infinity to infinity, so what's reasonable about it? You know, to reason, it's, it's bigger than that. <laughs> but it's like, you know, if we recognize that for one minute, that would change everything, you know, because exactly. the vastness, like you were talking about earlier. So, right. I mean, there's just a lot of ways and a lot of, like we talk about spokes on the wheel for us to come into mm -hmm. that experience, Absolutely. and we just want to have that experience. I mean, the, the way you get in, right. you know, just have it. Right. And more and more, how can we have it over and over and over? So it's like rubbing up against the magnet so much that we realize we're the magnet. Mm. That we're, you know, that mm -hmm. we're the one. And, you know. mm -hmm. Beautifully said. I should be a guest on these shows. <laughs> what did he say? No, <laughs> so, and, and you're finding like that people are more and more and more open to that and wanting that and not wanting to settle for for another car or a bigger car or, you know, the, the next husband or... Yeah. Well, there's a whole other thing that's happening now, you know, because there's sort of a spiritual revolution going on um, of a lot of people 
kind of mixing up all the different religions and different teachings into kind of this stew, which is beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's but sometimes people take it as the dogma of this one and the dogma of that one and the dogma of that one, and they can actually actually get more restricted. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. it's you know staying light, sort of staying on the top of it, rather like a surfer almost, rather than getting tumbled by the wave of the the tradition whatever the tradition may be but to stay one way you can always know when you got it right is when you feel all right pain in all forms is some kind of evidence of some kind of disharmony in the self period so whenever we're suffering which is you know we are all in coming in and out of that right. we're in some sort of disconnection position so that's a way we can tell that's our guidance in a way and that's pretty valuable to yeah, think of right. it just as simply as that. If we can disconnect and instead of saying, I feel terrible or yeah. I feel depressed or I feel hurt, yeah. you know, how can we you know, develop like that neutrality, that you know, third eye kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, one of the things I always say is, how can you love this? <laughs> you know, whatever it is, taxes, you know, traffic, how do you love this? You know, and that's, it's right. a funny question to ask yourself because it's, it is the answer if you can figure it out because it, it takes you out of the resistance to it. Right. As long as you're in a resistance to it, then... Yeah, there's always going to be. Yeah, we'll stay there longer. Right, right. And, and, and how have people been responding to the book? I mean, people who have meditated, haven't meditated. Yeah. Why don't you talk a little about that? Well, I get so many different kinds of responses. Um, people go to sleep with it. They loop it because it helps them. You know, so there's people that aren't really meditating. Well, they are meditating, you know, right. because maybe even more because well, it's subconscious I mean, at, at that level, point. Well, I mean, at their level, I mean, good, solid sleep is important. Oh, it absolutely is. My parents is. never get through the meditation on this show. <laughs> no, I mean, I, we were actually thinking of selling the shows as sleep aids right. at different times because <laughs> there was something so unusual to people yeah. and so mellow. Yeah. That it, was like, it takes you deeper. It takes you deeper, so you go to sleep for something. And you rest. Right, in, in 30 seconds, what do you want to tell the world? I want to tell them to love themselves, to forgive themselves, to be easier about it all, to have more fun with things, to play in their lives, um, and to let their life show them where they're to be, how to be, let nature kind of play back to you how to respond to it. You don't need to read one more book necessarily, not, nothing wrong with it, but there, you don't need anything outside yourself to do this. Just be kind to yourself, be gentle with yourself. Okay, that's beautiful. If you want any information, Diana, the book, Anybody, Mantram, Alan, 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. Thank you. Good night.